In this tutorial, I'm going to describe how to construct a tailored zip fly in a pair of trousers. There are several parts to the zip fly, uh, the trouser, of course, that the audience sees, uh, the facing part that clean finishes this top edge, and then, of course, the zipper, and then the extension that is sewn underneath uh, this zipper so that when you zip the zipper, you don't catch your tummy in the zipper. This is a teaching sample, so it's cut off short because what's most important is the zipper construction. So I use this as a teaching tool. And you can see it has all of the same pieces, clean finished edge, the zipper, uh, the fly extension, that shields your body uh, from the zipper. And you can see there are a few um, basting marks in here, and I'll explain what those are for as we go along. The most challenging part of creating a zip fly is remembering which is left and which is right to the side of the trousers. That's because the extension is on the right side of the trouser, and we only need one of those. The facing is on the left side of the trouser. We only need one of those. And so when you're cutting the pattern, you need to figure out the left side, right side, inside, outside conundrum. As I'm cutting, what I do is I cut two facings and two extensions and two of everything and then figure out the left side, right side as I'm doing my construction. Having cut two of everything, and by the way, now I'm switching to uh, smaller teaching samples for each step here. Fuse the white interfacing onto the wrong side of both of your fly facing pieces. Remember, the facing piece is gets stitched to the center front gets turned to the inside and faces that top edge. This is where you'll figure out which one it is, because it's right sides together. It would be this one, right sides together, so we see the interfacing. The other one, the second one that we don't need, set it aside, don't throw it away yet. So on the left front of the trousers, with hand sewing needle and white thread, just thread mark with a couple stitches the bottom of the fly opening. We're going to need that mark several times during this uh, construction, so make sure it's secure. On the fly facing, serge the outer curve of this edge. That's all you need to serge. And then, right sides together, stitch from the waist down to the notch, press all the seam allowances toward the facing, trim and clip and grade, and then understitch so that that edge, when we do a final press, is really nice and clean finished. On the right hand side of the trousers, where the fly extension will go, we need to thread mark the center front and then a quarter of an inch into the seam allowance because that quarter of an inch into the seam allowance line is where the zipper gets stitched to. So for the right hand side, let's thread mark on the seam line, the bottom of the fly, where the waistline is, and then I like to use a different kind of stitch, just a smaller one, to indicate where that quarter of an inch spacing is because that's where the zipper is going to be stitched to. The fly extension is bagged out or faced with uh, this uh, poly cotton to clean finish it. It's also a smoother finish next to the torso. So here is the fly extension with the white interfacing fused on it on the inside. There's the poly cotton facing onto the fly extension, and then when it's turned and pressed, it gets, it's bagged out and clean finished on that curved edge. Before you do uh, go too much further, here again, do a white thread thread marking 
right along the edge of that interfacing. Once you, and what that does is that transfers the mark to the outside. Because once you have this bagged out and the seam allowance trimmed down, and perhaps you need to notch inside the curve so it will lie flat, then press that really well. Machine stitch through both layers to keep them uh, from flopping around. Machine stitch about an eighth of an inch into the seam allowance from the hand basting and serge that edge for a clean finished look. Once you have the right side of the trouser, and by the way, this is the side the audience will see. This is the wrong side of the fabric. This is the right side of the trouser. So this is the outside of the fabric the right side of the fabric. It's also the right side of the, tr of the trousers themselves. You see how easily it's, it, you could get confused. This is the right side of the trouser. This is the right side of the fabric. The next step is, and here's my next step in the teaching pieces, the next step is to place the zipper face down. I'm going to turn this around so that you can see it at the angle. Face down with the stitching line on the zipper tape laying right on the uh, basted line that is a quarter of an inch into the seam allowance away from the uh, center front. So you want to pin that on Often, people like to hand baste this down and then machine stitch that zipper to the center front so that when we turn it, we can see that the zipper is stitched in a manner that offsets it away from the true center front. The reason we want that offset is so that when, we, when we're finished and zipping up the fly, the color of the zipper tape and the bulk of the zipper teeth are offset inside and what we see is this beautifully finished matched up center front. Once you have the zipper stitched to the right side of the trousers and turned this way, then you'll bring your fly extension that has been pressed and surged so forth as in a previous step and align it underneath. Top stitch right on this edge to hold all the pieces together. Once you have the left side with the facing on understitched and pressed down beautifully, and then the right side, the zipper stitched in, the zipper extension stitched in, then it's time to marry the two together from the fly notch down through the crotch curve. I'm going to get rid of this teaching sample so that you can see more clearly what I'm doing now. Now what we need to do is stitch the right side of the trousers to the left side of the trousers, right sides together, thusly. We don't want to catch any of the fly extension or the fly facing. What that would, if you did, that would make a very bulky bottom of your zipper. You'd hate it, you'd take it out, you'd do it over. So this is a little tricky. Here, oftentimes you find at the bottom of the zipper, you need to do a little bit of a clip to release the seam allowance from where it's been stitched here, and that's just fine. Line up, I'm going to bring this back. Here's the bottom of the zipper uh, basting. So that's where you want to start your pinning. Lining up at the fly zipper, fly notch. Lining that up. and I'm pinning this as if I were stitching it. That's just to show you how this is done. So pretend the pins are a line of machine stitching. 
so that when you did stitch that, there's the bottom of your zipper, there's your fly, and you can see where we're headed. This is the curve of the crotch. Once you have the crotch sewn, then it's time to line up true center front on this side, the beautifully faced and turned piece. Line that up with your true center front on this side, which is the white hand basting. I like to pin and then hand baste that in place because the next couple steps um, uh, we need to pull and tug and all that and we want to make sure that this edge doesn't move because we want to make sure that true center fronts are perfectly matched. So that edge then you would hand baste through all the layers to hold it in place. Once you have the center front basted in place so it can't squirrel around on you, on the right side, turn that over and this fly extension, the one that's bagged out with the poly cotton, we want to get that out of our way. Without distorting or pulling, just put a couple pins in that so we get him out of our way because we are going to be top stitching on here and we don't want to top stitch through that. So just get him out of the way so he can't bother us. Then over on this side we want to stitch the other side of the zipper to the fly facing. So pin that here. There we go. Pin that here Check to make sure you're actually catching your zipper tape. Machine stitch that. Once that's machine stitched, these pins can come out. Let's pretend they are out. And then the last thing is to arrange a line, the J-shaped top, top stitching line that goes all the way up uh, starts at the zipper notch, goes in a pleasing curve, and then goes all the way up to the waist. That is normally, oh, there is no normal in theater costuming. It has to do with period and scale and size, but that top stitching can be anywhere from an inch and a quarter from the center front edge to maybe even an inch and a half. You'll want to make sure to pin that well. Some people hand baste that and then stitch along. Uh, whatever achieves the flat, beautiful, straight stitching, um, do whatever it takes to get that. Down here at the bottom, again, be very careful about catching uh, seam allowance or other lumpy bits. You don't want to catch very much down at the bottom of that in order to produce a nice flat uh, effect down at the bottom. I'm going to bring this guy back so that you can see what the finished zipper looks like. Here's the facing. There's the zipper that is only stitched to the, to the facing. You can see there's no top stitching here. The top stitching line is actually out here. So the zipper is actually stitched to the facing and then the facing is top stitched to the trouser and that's what holds that all in place. On this side, there's the zipper, there's the fly extension, nicely bagged out with smooth cotton so it's uh, smooth next to the torso. And then allow me to turn this inside out so that you can see how clean finished it looks at the bottom. And there is a little clip in the seam allowance which allows the crotch seam to spring free from the bottom of the zipper fly. So that's what the inside looks like and it's pretty clean finished there. So that's this method of constructing the tailored zipper fly.